This month, we're talking about the job market and how it impacts supply and demand in housing. So stay tuned. Welcome to another local market update with Rick Batista. Welcome to another monthly market update, Chicago. Here we are in April covering the month of March. So I just wanted to share something with you at the start of the video. If you go to our YouTube channel and you see we have market updates uh, we have for specific areas uh, and the entire city of Chicago. Well, guess what? When we put out those monthly videos, it's the same video. However, there's a part later in the video where we share slides and data for that specific area. So if you're watching on YouTube right now and you check the caption out, you should be able to see the chapters listed. And just in case uh, you've already seen this video, uh, you you don't want to rewatch the entire thing and jump ahead to the to the area specific data and slides. So although we do serve Chicagoland, Chicago proper, as well as surrounding suburbs, we put together videos and cover specific areas throughout Chicago proper. So let's get started with some fun facts and I'll share some insights with you as well before covering the numbers. Fun facts, fun facts, market time. Nationally, existing home sales jumped 14.5% month over month as of last measure, the first monthly gain in 12 months, and representing the largest monthly increase since July 2020, according to the National Association of Realtors. The sudden uptick in sales activity stems from contracts signed toward the beginning of the year, when mortgage rates dipped to the, to the low 6% range, causing a surge in home buyer activity. Certainly something we saw right after the new year, a lot of uh, a lot of activity in the open houses. Pending sales have continued to improve heading into spring, increasing for the third consecutive month, according to NAR. National Association of Realtors. Month supply of inventory increased 27.2% for detached units, but decreased 5.8% for attached units. And monthly sales might have been even higher if not for limited inventory nationwide. The current sales pace, there were just 2.6 months supply of existing homes at the beginning of March, far below the four to six months supply of a balanced market. Inventory remains suppressed in part because of mortgage interest rates, which nearly hit 7% before falling again in recent weeks. Higher rates have continued to put downward pressure on sales prices and for the first time in more than a decade, national home prices were lower year over year, according to NAR, breaking a 131 month streak of annual price increases. Now I wanted to share some slides with you and a little bit of information about the jobs market and, and, and discuss in a little bit of more detail as to how the jobs market, even though maybe a de, de jour for most, uh, how the jobs market impacts housing. According to the most recent Bureau of Labor Statistics reports, unemployment is low across the country. Uh, right now we're sitting at, or at least since the most recent report, uh, we're sitting at 3.5% nationally. Uh, in fact, we've been under 4% uh, for the last 14 months, so not too shabby. Fortunately, that's the story for most of the country, but not in every state. Uh, if we take a look at a map here in Illinois, we're a bit higher, uh, about a full percentage point higher at 4.5%, uh, but still under 5%. And if we continue looking at the map here, something very interesting, uh, one of our recent market updates, uh, we covered uh, and discussed home prices are a little further into the red in those states that are uh, much more tech heavy, uh, specifically out west. Looking at this map, we can see one of the reasons why higher unemployment rates uh, in those same states. Now, Chicago may be seeing the same rate of unemployment as out west, uh, but luckily we're in the prairie state and not in the valley. Uh, I believe one of the major factors as to why we're seeing home prices remaining relatively stable, uh, or some may call it uh, flat growth. Uh, even though we had our fair share of crazy during the pandemic, we didn't reach the level of insanity uh, that other states saw, especially uh, out west and in some of the southern states, you know, those warmer states that don't get, uh, that may not see snow right after hitting 80 degrees, uh, as we did yesterday in Chicago. So as, as Chicago and Illinois came and continued to go uh, through this year's market, we started off on a little less shaky ground. So I think that's a huge difference here. So the bottom line is that the data showing today that we have a resilient economy with a solid job market, which is good news for the housing market. Why? Although for many, it may feel like you have to choose between saving for a home and buying groceries. What our economic history shows us is that less unemployment, more people working, the more households that are seeing consistent and are growing monthly income uh, should keep demand high. Okay, so demand is high. whoop de doo uh, What's going on with supply? Let's take a look at this chart comparing new listings for the month of March over the last several years. Uh, and what's so crucial about March? Asking some great questions today. Thank you so much. Well, what happens in March stays in March. No, no, silly. Uh, historically, uh, March helps set the tone for the spring and summer market. And here, if we take a look at this chart, uh, the good news is that we certainly have more inventory last month than we were showing in 2021 and 2022. The not so good news is uh, that we're still lower than we were in pre-pandemic years, especially the amount uh, the amount needed to meet demand. Uh, and that's where, and that's something that we've covered in recent uh, market update videos is that's why, although there've been price adjustments downward in some states or very, very flat in many others or slight increases in others, having that limited inventory or again, we've dove deeper into this, having lower quality inventory 
uh, is what's helping keep home prices a little bit higher than some may expect or have expected. Looking at this next chart here, we're seeing both active and new listings in January 2022. Uh, you see new listings peaked in June last year, right around the same time the rates, rates spiked up. Uh, we certainly saw those numbers go down since. Uh, however, they have been trending upward since the start of, of this year. And what happened that time? Uh, rates dipped down a little bit, giving hope to home buyers and sellers, uh, making attendance at open houses and offers in abundance once again. So certainly a busy start of the year. And since then, we've been riding that emotional roller coaster that's called real estate and life uh, and are looking forward to a solid spring and summer market. In fact, I'm not the only one that's being positive, uh, according to fact, Fannie Mae, 58% of those recently surveyed believe the market is still active and it's a good time to sell. You, the people who are paying attention to what's going on behind the scary headlines, uh, perhaps watching our videos here and staying informed, uh, at least locally, realize that that crash that was on the tongue of mainstream media's headlines has not transpired. And as of right now, it doesn't look like it's going to happen. So sorry, doom and gloomers. Overall, this seems to be a good amount of encouragement for buyers and sellers while taking into consideration that the market is still playing the balancing act and mortgage rates are still high uh, compared to where we were just a year ago. But it would appear from the peak of uh, last June through February of this year, prices have already adjusted or bottomed out in many states uh, and or across the country. Uh, in fact, the median sales price is actually down 12% nationally. But overall, the data shows that people's paychecks are rising and going straight to the grocery stores, lol. While taking all of that into consideration, housing affordability is getting better. Are we in a wonderful and ideal space? Absolutely not. Uh, we got a ways to go. Again, the data is showing that we are digging ourselves out of the hole that we found ourselves in uh, late last year. So now it's time to wake up for the moment you've been waiting for. Uh, how did Chicago wrap up last month in March? Let's take a look, see folks. But before that, suspense awaits. Uh, gonna look at the lender mediated report right quick. Uh, this is covering uh, those properties, uh, you know, bank owned properties, foreclosed, REO, pre foreclosure, short sales etc etc uh, because that's part of the been in the, because this topic has certainly been part of the doom and gloomers wonderful and scary headlines uh, you know, during the pandemic as we've mentioned time and time again in our videos there was a more torment foreclosures banks were trying to do everything possible to keep people in their homes uh, country was already going through enough so we were bound to see those numbers go up uh, once th once the air started to clear but these numbers still aren't as scary as many people were anticipating if you see here we peaked in, in january at four percent while we were uh, uh, staying below 3% the last, most of the last four months. After being uh, below 3% over the last four months of last year, and January and February of this year were pretty much neck and neck, uh, but March shows a dip down to 3.2%. So although higher than last year, uh, and definitely higher than the years of 2021 and 2022, it's very unfortunate for those who have to uh, go through situations like that, but that's just part of a reality of the of, of home ownership. And I would like to mention that those situations are ones that we uh, specialize in and we try and handle with uh, as much sensitivity and, and understanding as compassion as possible. So if you're in a situation or you know somebody who is, oftentimes people who are in those situations don't talk about it very freely. If you suspect something, please uh, connect them with, with me. I'd be more than happy to have a conversation and, and see how we can help out. Uh, looking at the data, it's provided by the Chicago Association of Realtors. Uh, this is covering Chicago proper, the 77 areas. Uh, certainly the numbers you see here may not be happening in your specific area. Uh, but as I mentioned at the start of this video, you can always skip ahead if you've already seen this video and check out what's happening in your local market. So new listings for the month of March were for all properties, all residential properties down by 33.6%. Low sales down by 24.1% and inventory of homes down by nearly 22%. And for this video, we'll just be covering the detached single family market. Um, we can certainly share information and data with you about the attached market being condos and townhomes. But let's take a look at the data for detached single family homes. Uh, new listings, uh, month of March, we wrapped up with 1,393 down 23.3%. We're comparing this March to last March. Year to date, 3,863 down year over year. 11.8%. Under contract, comparing both Marches, 944 last month down by 17.3%. Year to date, 2,271 down 22% year over year. Low sales, 818 down by 14.5% versus March of 2022. Uh, year to date, 1,730 down by just under 30% year over year. 
Median sales price, 295K, certainly not the case in every neighborhood in Chicago, uh, but down 8.7% comparing both marches. The year-to-date number is at 285K, down by 5% year over year. Average sales price, $444,003, uh, down 6.7% compared to March of last year. Uh, year to date, we are at 417346 down by 5.6%. Average list price, I always think it's uh, interesting to take a look at this information as well, comparing that to the, the average sales price. Uh, month of March, 503855 down by 2.7% compared to March of last year. And for the year, 484363 down by 6% over year. Percent of a Original list price received. Uh, this is a very crucial number uh, to pay attention to because, uh, especially when you're looking at specific areas, uh, but across Chicago, I think this is a, a pretty good number to be at. Uh, especially with recent elections, I know, as always, there's been a lot of uh, conflict and discussions on, on the neighborhood boards that uh, we like to watch and can be very intrigued and entertained by. But I think this number is a great indicator as to show the amount of desire that people either want to be in Chicago um, or want to be in a specific area of Chicago. Uh, but here we are at 96.6%. That sounds like a radio station. Uh, for March of this year, down by 1.6% comparing uh, to last March. And for the year, still not too shabby, 95.5%. Also sounds like a radio station. Down by 2.1% year over year. Market time, another great indicator of how the market is doing. Uh, we certainly have been seeing higher market times. Uh, this is the average days that a, a property st spends on the market, uh, and that's directly tied into the percent of original list price received, uh, because the better you price your home right out of the gate, chances are the less market time you're going to have. But here we are sitting at 84 days in the market on average uh, for Chicago, which is up compared to last March, 36.8%, and year-to-date, 83, up by 35.8% year-over-year. Inventory of homes for sale, we wrapped up the month of March with 2,091, up by 0.3% compared to March of 2022. So, what does all this information and data mean for you? Heck if I know. All depends on what's going on in your life and your household. Let's start a conversation and see how we can help you make the most informed decisions especially when it comes to your housing goals. If you like copies of any of these reports or slides that we shared with you in this video or any of our recent videos, feel free to reach out. You can call, text, or email. My contact info is below. And remember, love and money may come and go, but time is something we never get back. So I appreciate and thank you so much for spending some time with me today. If you want to stay on top of the market with us, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification button. Take care of yourselves and each other, and I'll catch you next time.